Greetings and welcome to another episode of Trippy Food and another installment of Viewer's Choice. So Viewer's Choice is where we take a suggestion from one of our viewers or subscribers and we make it happen. So today we are doing a suggestion from Eli, who goes by Stoner Kitchen, who suggested that we make Bondegi Ceviche. Now, uh, if you haven't had ceviche before, I recommend that you try it. Not necessarily Bondegi Ceviche, but I recommend you try ceviche. Ceviche is uh, uh, Latin American, uh, mostly South American. The Peruvians really kind of have the market on it. They do it. They, they do it the best. And what it is is, um, think of it like a pico de gallo that uh, doesn't have uh, vinegar, so they're not using acetic acid, but they're using citric acid from lemons and limes, and they're using that to cook fish. So uh, you can put scallops in there, fish. You know, there are different types of fish you'll find in ceviche. And so what Eli suggested is Eli suggested that we use uh, bondegi, which is silkworm pico. Now, uh, it's not that much of a departure. The thing is that the way ceviche works is that you can use raw fish and the citric acid in the lemons and the limes kind of cooks it. And so what we're gonna do is, since we're using silkworm pupa that's already cooked, then we're just, gonna, we're just not gonna leave it in that long. So typically what you wanna do is you wanna uh, put the citric acid on whatever it is that you, um, you're, you're trying to cook for at least a half an hour. And what some people do is just to avoid foodborne illnesses, parasites, what they'll do is they'll just lightly, lightly, lightly cook, you know, the fish or something, and then just finish it with, uh, with the citric acid from the lemons and the limes. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make a ceviche and we're going to use soccorn pupa. Now all the stuff here is going into the ceviche. I wanted to use kind of a, a almost like a native corn as opposed to a, you know, your standard yellow corn, just because it's just uniform and everything else. We're going to roast this corn and then we're gonna cut the kernels off. We're gonna put that in the ceviche. Now, typically what you can find, you're gonna find some kind of chilies in here. We have jalapeno and we have habanero. We're gonna put both of those in there. We have tomatoes, we're gonna to put that in there. Um, we have sweet potato, which is a necessity if you're making a Peruvian type ceviche. Now, some of the optional things, avocado, cucumber. We have some, we'll cut it up and we'll, we'll kind of put it in afterwards, but it's not necessary to, to do a good ceviche with that. So we, here's the star of the show, the silkworm pupa. You can get this at most Asian markets. Now, the ingredients are silkworm pupa, water, soy sauce, monosodium glutamate, salt, contains soybeans, contains wheat. What we're going to do is we're going to rinse this off because, again, we just want the taste of the bondegi, not the sauce that it's cooked in. So full disclosure, I don't like silkworm pupa. I've tried it maybe five, six, maybe even seven times, and I really don't like it. The only way that it's, it's somewhat decent is roasted. It's Then it's okay, but it still has that kind of gritty, grassy taste that I'm just not, not crazy about, which is probably why Eli picked this in the first place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain this, we're gonna rinse it. The prep is the longest part of it. We're gonna get the silkworm pupa under citric acid. We're not gonna leave it in for a whole 30 minutes because it doesn't need to be, it's already cooked. We're gonna chop up the other ingredients and we're going to prepare ourselves a bondegi or silkworm pupa ceviche. So thank you for the suggestion, Eli. I don't know if you uh, love me or hate me, but either way, we're gonna find out. So uh, I'll leave the camera open while we're preparing this, but we'll catch you on the other side.
okay, it's time to put everything together. So here's our moon deggy. Cooking in that delightful lime and lemon juice. And again, they're already cooked. All right, so we're gonna put it in a mixture of jalapeno, habanero, onion, a little bit of garlic. Now, I think I would have liked to have had some cilantro to put in here, but I didn't, I don't have any. But that's, you know, something you can put in optionally. Tomatoes. Corn. All right, now I'm gonna put some more of the lime and lemon juice on top of that. Now, I will tell you, as far as ceviche goes, that the best ceviche I ever had in my entire life was in Key Biscayne, California. So there's a te uh, tennis courts. I'm not sure exactly where these tennis courts are, but every day around noon, there's a guy, a chef, who shows up in an unmarked white van and sells ceviche out of his van, proving ceviche, and it is amazing. Just amazing. Best ceviche I ever had in my life. Don't know the guy's name. Unmarked white van. Don't the best things come out of unmarked white vans? Well, it doesn't smell bad. Let's put some sweet potato in there. Actually, it looks pretty good. I have no idea how it's gonna taste, but it looks pretty good. All right, let's go over to the table and eat. All right, here we go. Bundeki ceviche. So, again, Eli. Thank you for the suggestion, I think. We'll see. I mean, it looks colorful, it looks fresh. So again, uh, the only drawback is I wish I had some cilantro in there, but I do not. It actually looks tasty. I'm a little nervous about this, but it actually looks tasty. <sighs> okay, here we go. This one's for you, Eli. Now, I can tell I'm eating the bodegi because it's chewy, but all these other ingredients in here, and probably the citric acid, kind of take away that kind of grassy taste. I'm gonna get a spoonful here with a bunch of bodegi on it. But everything I put in here, the corn, the habanero, the sweet potato, all really adds to it. No. The extra flavors in here really kind of disguise that grassiness and it really tastes good. It makes it taste very good. The thing that's odd about it is the texture. The texture of the silkworm pupa because it's a little bit leathery. I didn't mention this at the beginning. I probably ought to mention this now. So we, we kind of mentioning bondegi. What bondegi is silkworm pupa. Um, the way people started eating it was in Korea, in the, in the factories where they would unspin the silk. When they unspun the silk, you had the pupa inside before it turned into a moth. And in order to keep up their strength, they would just, as soon as it was all spun out, they would eat the pupa and um, keep up their strength that way. Well, it became a street food. So you could walk down the street in Korea and there'd be some guy with a big drum uh, with boiled bonegi and they'll just take out a scoop of it and just eat it on the go. So it's kind of a thing that if you grew up in Korea, you're familiar with it, you might even like it. But me, it took a lot of getting used to before I could even, you know, eat this. So, uh, so that's what, uh, that's what bone is, is silkworm pupa. Now, uh, what d does it need if it needs anything? Maybe a little bit of pepper and salt. I'm gonna put a little bit more in here. I'm gonna be honest with you, because I'm, I'm not a big fan of Bondegi, and this is not bad at all. But I think it's because of everything else that's in there. I, if you're gonna use jalapenos and habaneros, I would not use a hot sauce. I would not like add a hot sauce to it. It has plenty of heat on its own, and you get bites of that heat, little packets of that heat. So I think, so let's put some, um, let's put some avocado and some cucumber on there. Really, we should be mixing it in there, but I wanted to try it without first. All right, so here's with the cucumber and the avocado.
Yeah, it's good. It's a thumbs up. So, if anybody asks me if I will ever eat bondegi again, yes, I will eat it in ceviche. It's delicious. I mean, here's the caveat. It's delicious in here. Not del it's not delicious. The, the sorco and pupa themselves are not delicious, but in the ceviche, the whole dish is delicious, and I give it a big thumbs up. So, if you want to try that, you pretty much saw how I did it. Give it a shot. If you're looking for Sokra and Pupa or Mondegi, any Asian market's going to have it. If there's a H Mart near you, they're going to have different kinds. But if you're going to do ceviche, get one that's kind of in a mild sauce. You don't want anything that's in a, like a, a chili sauce or anything like that. Ideally, they have them frozen. I'm not sure how cooked the frozen ones are, but they might work better, uh, the, the frozen ones, because when you thaw those out, if they're not fully cooked, uh, then the citric acid kind of cooks them and you get the same effect that you do if you're adding seafood to your ceviche. So this is a big thumbs up. Thank you, Eli. Uh, it was a good suggestion. I didn't think it was going to be, but it, it was a good suggestion and I thank you so much. If you want to see us make something that you suggest, go to our community page on YouTube and underneath there, there'll be a article or a post called the suggestion box. So one of the suggestion box, leave a suggestion is something you'd like to see. And if we put it on here, we will give you a shout out for suggesting a viewer's choice item. So just remember that it's crazy out there. And please be careful. Take care of yourselves, take care of others, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for checking out Trippy Food. If you enjoyed watching that video half as much as I did making it, well then I enjoyed it twice as much as you did. And if that's the case, you'll probably like this video right here. And if not, check out this video right here. That one's a little bit different. Either way, leave a comment down below and be sure to subscribe by clicking on the Trippy Food icon right here. Glad you could make it and we hope to see you again soon.